I'm talking to Pierre Romano. He's chairman of Satcha, which is a crafts uh, incubation center in Siem Reap. Hi, uh, welcome to yes. Satcha. Uh, Pierre, yes. can you tell me about Satcha? What does it do? Ah, Satcha is a handicraft center, as you can see, but with a very different uh, mindset, vision, and business model. The idea is really to make the handicraft industry in Cambodia more sustainable and to build a real, in, uh, I would say, industrial sector. Now it's very informal. It's a small workshop here and there, people working from home. Uh, it's not uh, organized enough to, for example, export or promote this know-how because this is really one of the Cambodian identity, but it's not known enough. So the idea was to build something different, to showcase and to have a sustainable future for this industry. Can you tell me about the people here where do they come from? Oh, they all come from Siemre province. They all live around. We don't want them to commute too much. Next step will be to build workshop in different areas. But now, now they're all from Siemre. Uh, they all are master craft people. We, we, we don't train them here to be uh, more technical. We train them on the soft skill. The idea is to build, uh, is, to, is to give them a free entrepreneurship program for three years. That's why they are incubated. That's why it's an incubation center. And after the three years, they are able to create their own company, their own workshop, their own brands. So some of them, maybe it will be shorter than that. Some of them, it will be a little bit longer. We are very flexible on this. And also during these three years, that's why it's a hybrid model. We also act as a co-op because we commit to buy all their products and we sell for them. They don't have to worry about the sales. We are the one handling the marketing and sales. So they already have the skills, they, they bring already the skills, have the skills. Yeah. and you teach them to market it? We teach them, yeah, more than that. We start with uh, communication and language because most of them unfortunately stop school very early. So even some of them don't know how to read and write in Khmer. So we start with Khmer and then some basic English so they can also work internationally. And then we work on the marketing, digital marketing, how to, how to use the social network. Now they are uh, under the art history program to open their creativity and also to understand what they are producing about the history of Cambodia. And uh, the next step will be about uh, design. The next step will be some basic management and finance, how to manage their budgets and to build their, their own company. Because at the end, the idea is that they can be fully independent. Yeah. How long have you been going? We opened only a year and a half ago. So year and a half? Yeah, still, still quite new. Still a lot of uh, things ongoing, but I'm quite happy with uh, the way it is. So have you any successes so far that you're, you're happy with? Oh, well, many successes. <laughs> many yeah. success. The first success was to be able to open this, yeah. because actually we started the project during uh, COVID from scratch. Uh, it was just the idea. I used to manage a big uh, handicraft company in Cambodia. It was the social branch of a French multinational. And when COVID starts, we were working mainly with tourism. So when COVID started, they decided to suspend everything. So I think about how we can make revenue for the, the craft people. So I started to find some commission work for them from home, and they produce from home. And then together we start to think about a different business model. I didn't want them to be employee again. And then after 20 years still with the basic salary and the, the kids cannot go to school and all this social ladder that was not working. So we built this, pro this program. We announced about this. We had about 400 applications. We selected roughly 50. Now we are 75. So 75 people, yeah, you're, 75 training, you're people. training 75 people yes. here now. And we want to get some investors because this has a cost, as you can imagine. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the nice thing is that we find honestly, funding in two months, mainly with Cambodian. So 70% of the funding of this center is Cambodian. 100% of the staff is Cambodian. I'm the only one that is not Cambodian yet. But So this uh, is a fully functional commercial operation yeah it's a commercial it's not an ngo yeah yeah uh, one one point also that i was uh, really strict on is that we don't want people to come and buy because sorry to say it like this but to support the poor cambodian for the village and no we want people to buy the excellence of cambodian craftsmanship and this is what we are promoting yeah. here based on its quality yes based on the quality based on the design based on on the business model but not support yeah. by the excellence and and we are a private company we are not an NGO we are a social company because in our shareholder agreement we commit to give back to sort of our profits profit for benefit for the craft people so they have social insurance they have pension fund they have everything that an employee would have but they are not an employee 
And do you have any successes so far that you can <coughs> big successes your product? Uh, yes, the big success is that we managed to balance our sales. We have about one third with the tourists. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to be focusing on tourists. We know what can happen. Yeah. And uh, another third is with the local markets. Cambodian buy, come and buy a lot. Yeah. And another third is with special project. You can see, for example, this, this uh, Absala bas relief over ah, there. Yeah. This is a decoration for uh, office. It's what we call special projects. So people come here and order based on our skill, some decoration for local market also. Can you tell us about some of these, uh, these projects? For What's happening here? Uh, it's still a bit confidential because we're not supposed to disclose our customer, but I can say that this one, for example, is uh, for the government, for a new uh, office building. Uh, we have another one for a big hotel, five-star hotel in Simrip, ongoing project. We have some from private house. We really diversify our activity, but with the same uh, core business. So this, this is all, ancestral craft yeah. yeah, this is all carved out of a single piece of wood, is that correct? It's uh, oh, two piece, two three pieces. piece. You can see this one is three ah, piece. Yes, top, yes. yes. For two reasons. First, it's very difficult for this uh, pink sandstone. It's from Cambodia, but it's very difficult to find huge piece of pink sandstone. You ah, can find the gray one, but the big no one, one. And another one is to carry and to install. Yeah. We cannot have big piece. But at the end, you will not see. It will be seamless. Yes. Because we have the, the finishing team that will make it totally seamless. Right. Now, my understanding is that the, the government is very particular about the accuracy of... They are. They are. Uh, and so you, everything here is... It, it depends what we are working on. When we are working on, on the traditional topic, yep. uh, the temple, religion, the history of Khmer people, yes, they are very strict on respecting the, 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 the yeah. standards. And that's good. That's, for example, for this one. But then on the other hand, and for example, for this customer, we also produce some very contemporary design. Yep, yep. So it's as long as it's not uh, involving religion or, or tradition, yep, yep. we can produce something you very contemporary. Something. And that's something we want to show is with, with this traditional know-how, we can produce amazing uh, modern style art. So that's the combination that's of yeah. Khmer uh, culture, yes. historical culture and the, the modern contemporary Right. This is a big part of what you, you do, isn't it? Yes, it's a big part of yeah, what we can do. Can you tell us how that The how best that example is a workshop. Yep. This is made by a Cambodian team from uh, Kampong Cham, yes. because they have the skill and they have a lot of plantation, bamboo plantation then, yes. there. It's local material, it's local skill. We work on this one without any architect or designer. Mm. We design with them, so they have the skill to make something very contemporary with a traditional material. Right, so the whole, this is all bamboo. All bamboo, yeah. Uh -huh. We wanted to showcase that traditional how local material can produce amazing modern style uh, architecture. And it's the same with uh, crafts. Can we move on and see what else sure. is happening? Sure. So you've seen the stone. We have ceramic. Well, she's not here today, but we have here and another workshop outside for cooking. We have a painter. He used to be, that's also a good example, because he used to be a pagoda painter. He pa painted the walls and the, and the ceiling of the pagoda with yeah. very, very pagoda traditional, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. very traditional painting. And now, see, he's creating, he's very ah, creative, right. yeah. creating very different style. So he learned as a pagoda painter? Yes. Pagoda. That's where he learned his craft. Yes. So you have got traditional... Uh, Imagery, traditional imagery, but imagery. with, with and some very colors. contemporary, very contemporary uh, yes. looks. So you've got a combination. So, yeah. so what kind of uh, buyer does this appeal to? Is it foreigners, Cambodians? Who, who uh, buys it? Foreigners, of course, yep, yep. they buy. But the nice uh, thing is that we find out that the young generation, the young middle class Cambodian, y yeah. They also so like this kind like, of modern art, oh. and they don't want their house to be look like their parents' house. Yeah, yeah. And they very much like this kind of uh, modernized traditional yeah. art. So, so it's always inspired by Khmer culture, yeah. but it's modern. So they keep the cultural tradition, yeah. but they without fitting with a modern setting. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So what, what's next? Ceramic. So here we work on lacquer. The lacquer is on bamboo. This is the same bamboo that we use ah, for yes. the construction. So it's also a, a way to show that, you know, in, in, in most countries, especially here, the bamboo is considered as the, the material of the poor. Yes. 
for the small hut on the river or this kind of thing. We want to demonstrate that it's not. It can be a luxury item. When you look at this, this is a luxury vase with 10 layers of, uh, of, of uh, lacquer, with amazing painter. You have to polish every layer. It's a very long process. It takes almost one month to make one. A like month this. to make that? Yes. So again, traditional know-how, uh, local material, but luxury products. Okay. So what would this be used for? For as a vase for oh, like dry flowers or yep. solid floor. And each of these is hand painted? Of course, everything is hand painted. Yes. <laughs> so. You can see that she's doing now. Ah. She's painting the, the fish. Can I come around and look? That's something amazing in Cambodia is that they have this natural talent for drawing and painting. Yeah. Whatever skill they have here, they all know how to draw. Whether they are lacquer, ceramic, sculpture, or leather carving, they all know how to draw. These are also sandstone? Yes, sandstone. That King, is, King I mean, how, how do you carve it without it breaking? That was... <laughs> That's very difficult. And it happens that it breaks and then they have to start have again. To start again. Yes. Yes. I mean, this is such fine work. Such fine. And, and this is an ancestral know-how. I guess you've been to the temple. You've yes, seen yes. that in the temple. They know how temples. to do this for thousands of years. It is amazing. So it's a yeah. continuous yeah. Uh, yes. handed down through generations. Yeah. And is that a delicate stone? I think sandstone. It is. Delicate. It's delicate. It's quite easy to break. If you just make it fall like this, it will <laughs> stand away. Break in peace. Yes. And this is days and days of work. You know, one like this is about two two weeks at least. Two, two weeks. weeks. Two week? Yeah, full time to do one. Yeah. Yes. The big one that you saw over there is on this since three months already. Three months on the big upside. It's almost finished now. So you've got no one at the moment doing the ceramics? Yeah, maybe she's out. Okay, so there's plenty to see. Yes. Here they work on natural fibers, uh, mainly rattan, but also water hyacinths. I don't see any water hyacinth here, but the water hyacinth is this, this yeah. Ah, yes, yeah, yeah. plant behind. They do bags, but now they are working on, on rattan. And also, that's also something we try to promote, is to make them work together. For example, you can see these pieces where they make Ceramic together with rattan, very contemporary style also. So it's a good example of mixing material, mixing skills, making them work together, creating new design, and all by hand, of course. It's very labor intensive. It is. <laughs> so are you competing in any way with the local markets or is this entirely different? We are, but it's a fair competition. I mean, we try to have different design. We try to also mix the material, have a different approach with the customer uh, on the way they buy and support from us. Again, as I told you, we're not an NGO. We don't want uh, uh, buyers to pity yeah, the yeah, workers. Yeah. We want them to appreciate the excellence of their work. So. Yes, we are maybe a bit more expensive than others, mm -hmm. but for a reason, for yes. a good reason. And it's more sustainable. You cannot build an industry on donations. Yeah. Yep. These, are, these are lovely, aren't they? Nice, huh? That's beautiful. So what's the outside, is that? What is it? Ceramic, 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 and, yeah, ceramic and rattan. And who rattan. does the designs? Are they thought up by the, the workers? Together, the we look, yeah, we're together. We have a design office with two designers. Yep, yep. Yeah. And uh, they work together with the craft people, see if it's doable or not. They also suggest some ideas, more and more. Yes. This now, is leather tell carving. Me about this. Leather, leather carving, carving is also a very old tradition for the shadow puppets. Yes, yes, yes. And now we reuse this for decoration. For, for example, all this big one, it will be uh, uh, with a frame and the backlight behind. And it's really beautiful. You, we, put, we put a frame, we put a, a fabric, Fab white fabric, yeah. and yep. the backlight. And it's really it's amazing, very beautiful. And that's big and it's impressive. It's big, this yes. is this is very much for someone with a nice big apartment. It's for a big office. It's big office, big <laughs> this office. This one is for a big office. Yeah. <laughs> it's a special uh, order also. I would love to have one of them in my office. That would be that would be fabulous. And this is the leather being made. Yeah, it's cow skin. Cow, cow skin. Cow skin. 
And these two are amazing drawers, also. They draw everything themselves. Ah. Yeah, they're very good at drawing. So you start with a the, piece the, of the plain, skin? plain skin like this. Right. The cow skin. They draw on it. Yes. And then they come. Draw freehand? Yeah. Yeah, they were very good at drawing. That's an amazing drawing skill, painting yes. skills, isn't it? Yeah. It's amazing. And then they never learn how to draw. They learn how to carve, they learn the, the technical skill, the yeah. drawing. They never learn, but they all know how to draw. It's very frustrating for us to learn for years and still yeah. <laughs> draw like. <laughs> so do you sell, do you export them? Not, to, yet. not yet. We sell to, to foreigners, yeah, but yeah. we don't export. We are not organized yet to have a consistent production on fixed items. We create, still create a lot of different products, but very limited series, yeah. like two, three, tens. To work on export, it will be a, a bit more uh, complicated in terms of organization and logistics. Yeah. In the future, yes, but this is not the priority. Because this is so lovely that uh, <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I can see this in a high-end shop in London or Paris. I can see this. Yes. Yeah. We organize events here yeah. where we bring the best of uh, uh, Cambodian dancers, ah, uh, yep, uh, puppet yep. show, shadow puppet shadow. show, uh, bokator fighting. Yeah. And we put, the we put the platform here for dinner or cocktail and we organize the, we use the workshop as a stage. Yep. And at night with the bamboo and the yellow light and the candle, it looks really beautiful. Okay. So we have a lot of, every week now we have events here. So it's another activity, still promoting Khmer culture, but with living arts, dancing, so, boxing. So this whole complex is open to the public, to visitors, they open can come. To, freely they can open look, to the public. They can wander around, yes. they can watch the, the production, watch yep. the craftsman, yes. the whole process. Yeah, that's what we wanted to show this, this talent that they have in Cambodia. It's not known enough. We know about no, Kawat, we know a couple of things, but we don't know much it, about this, this uh, amazing talent. Yeah. And they can see traditional shadow puppets, they yeah. can see dancing music. Music, music. of course, music yeah. with the traditional yeah. instruments. Yeah. 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 And how often is that? We, now we do on booking, so we have one or two booking per week mm -hmm. of groups coming here. It can be, sometimes it's yeah. just a family, we had a family doing this for, for them only. Yeah. Sometimes it's 80 people. Yeah, you do but, weddings? Uh, we do weddings. We, do we weddings. even did an Indian wedding, traditional Indian wedding here. Yeah. 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 Mm. So this is all our product. Here is more about decoration in this room. The next room is more about uh, fashion. All the jewelry that you can see here is made of steel. But this is more the kitchen part with rattan, ceramic. And from this part, this is product that we, we are retailer for this product, but we don't produce here. Of course, the food, food and beverage, the spices, and some local workshop that we partner because they have nice products and we want to promote them. These knives are made in Simri. Yeah, very, yeah. Yes, made in Simri. Very, very high quality knives for chef. It's the, they import the steel from Japan because yep. it's the best steel and then they make the knife here. We also have a coffee shop, restaurant where people can stay. You can stay like half day here and enjoy mm. the place. Mm. We have a lot of young uh, Cambodian coming here. They drink coffee and they work. They bring their laptop. Oh. They, they, they work here half day How because we're be? very near the university here. Yeah. Voilà. Do you have any people who have gone out, started their own business and already doing well? We have one. one. I'm quite proud of this. He left about uh, two, three months ago, he yes. was a stone carver here. He was already almost ready to, to, to jump into entrepreneurship when he joined us, but yes. he needed a little bit more confidence. Yes. So he spent a year plus with us and then he left. And now he's one of our subcontractors for the big projects. Yeah. So we give him a lot of work. Yep. We still continue our mission with him. So I'm, I'm very proud of this. It's, uh, it proved that it can work. It can work, yeah. 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 Pierre, what, what are your plans for the future? Ah, we have to different uh, uh, future development. The first one would be to start training the young generation to handicrafts mm -hmm. because we want these skills to survive and, and to be preserved for the future. And we partner already with the Ministry of Culture and Fine Arts and we open together with them a weaving workshop in Coulain Montaigne yeah. where we have 15 students there uh, helped by the Ministry of Culture and trained by us for six months to one year training. And then after they will join our incubation program. Mm. So this is something we want to duplicate with carving, with whatever skill that are, are a little bit down. We want to preserve this and, and start to train the young generation. And the second part will be to open this incubation and program, but remotely in some region where they have specific skills. 
for example, in Kampong Chenang for the, the pottery, in Kandal province for the silver silverware, in Prasad for the marble, have the same idea, the same incubation mm -hmm. program, but remotely and open locally uh, workshop. Yeah. Was there something about the silk you wanted to show us? Or yeah, the silk. So, so first is our first uh, vocational training program for the young generation is about silk, silk. because we opened this work, this this school now in in Kulen, and also we have this vision that by reviving the silk weaving in Cambodia, maybe we can also start to revive the, the plantation and the mulberry trees and the cocoon because unfortunately most we are destroyed and there's very little lo local yeah. production now. And it's yeah. a very old tradition in Cambodia. So. Yeah. Good. Thank you very much. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thanks to you.